I'm terrible at this. How is it? I had, I swear I had directed, and I wasn't committed from far enough away, like, the notes start to move down. Is that a line or in the blue line? I can't, I, yeah, I have terrible tracking uh, when I get to one side. And this is in reading, too. It just has little, like, I have to do my finger to follow. Oh, I understand. I do. Oh. What's wrong with this? Tell us. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Grace Church. We're excited you're here with us today. Those of you here in our sanctuary and those of you joining us online, we see you checking in and saying good morning. It is great to see your names popping up this morning. Hello, Arliss Marie, Curtis, Christy, uh, uh, Christian. We're glad to see you checking in this morning and popping on the feed. Uh, So good morning to you. Uh, It's a great day to worship God in this place And we're excited as we continue our Growing in Grace Capital campaign and the special Sundays for that. And so today we're going to bring a special word about the the impact of the ministry of Grace Church on people's lives. And uh, so we have another exciting video to share today in the middle of our sermon, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, As we begin our worship today, it's become our custom to light the candles together to, uh, to invite God into this space. And especially for those of you who are at home, we would invite you to make your home a sanctuary this morning by grabbing a candle. Any candle will do. And as we light the candles on the altar and as we center ourselves through our gathering song, we'd invite you to light that candle and say a prayer to ask God to come into your house and make it a sanctuary so that you join us as we gather in this sanctuary today. And our prayers knit us together as we lift up our voices and praise God this morning together. So has been bound now to 
Please stand and join us in our opening song, God is Love.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray together and prepare ourselves for worship. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for a song of praise. We lay them down before your throne. You will make them something greater. for the readings. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent! and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and that you will receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, your children, and all who are far away, every one whom the Lord calls to him. And, they te and he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. All who believed were together 
and had all and had all things in common. They would sell their positions and goods and distribute all to any that had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. together in unity it is like fine oil upon the head that runs upon the beard upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe it is like the dew of Hernan that falls upon the hills of Zion for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Oh, how good it is to live together in unity. Oh, how good it is to live together. for the gospel reading. According to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, let me be what you make of me, while you be what I love. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So recently, I've gotten sucked into the documentary section of Disney+. Plus. Has anybody else fallen into that hole? <laughs> uh, many of you know my great love for Disney movies and Disney theme parks. 
uh, had grandparents who lived in Orlando for many years, and so that is a very sentimental place, Disney World and the Magic Kingdom and uh, all, all, all those parks really uh, have many memories of both sets of grandparents uh, there. And, um, you know, I'm kind of the easy target demographic for those documentaries on Disney Plus because I just sink right in. And so uh, I got sucked into the Imagineering documentary. Has anybody seen this? It's like a little mini-series. Okay, excellent. And it chronicles Walt Disney's journey from Mickey Mouse on a scratch pad to where Disney is today, even past his death. It's a six-hour special, and I watched it all in a week. And it just I just ate it all up. I love Walt's story. Uh, I love his vision. I love how he took an idea and created an entertainment industry, an empire out of it. I'm inspired by his tenacity and his perseverance through some really rough periods, especially in those early years when people really doubted everything that he was about. Uh, But he was driven. He did all that he did because he was driven by a vision and a desire to inspire joy in both kids and adults. Uh, I especially love, though, that he was always thinking about the next steps. He was always thinking about what progress looked like. Every time they would come up with something beautiful and creative and imaginative and wonderful, he would appreciate it and then say, what's next? He was always ready to ready to go. And last time I was at Disney World at the Magic Kingdom there in Orlando, there's a fair bit of construction going on because the vision of progress that Walt had and the vision uh, uh, for detail that he had has still not gone away, even past his death. And so there's a number of signs hanging on the fences around the construction zones that say things like, pardon our progress, a very lovely way to put it. Uh, And then what really stuck out to me was this sign. So I took this picture. It says, you can dream, create, design, and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it requires people to make the dream a reality. And I just love that. I was moved by that, took the picture, and just stood there for a moment to appreciate the quote. It was very fitting for Disney theme parks, of course, but why it stuck out to me was not because of Disney theme parks. It rang true to me about the nature of church and of Christian community. You can dream, design, create, and have a beautiful vision for a church, for community, for ministry, but without people, it is nothing. I wonder often about the disciples in those early days of the church as they sat around and they just, Jesus had died and uh, they'd experienced the resurrection, but they were sitting there for 50 days after Easter and just wondering, what's possible? Where do we go from here? Jesus had inspired them. They had experienced his life and death, his resurrection, but they're sitting there wondering what's next and what progress looked like for them for where they were in that moment. And Jesus' teachings were were kind of hard. I don't know if you've thought about this, but turning the other cheek, loving your enemies, forgiving seven times 77, the radical generosity that Jesus kind of inspired people to and called them to live, it's kind of tough stuff, a hard sell. So was this actually practical? Could this be put into practice? Would people follow this dream or was it just a fantasy? Jesus' life ended in death, after all. And yet, in the reading today that we read from Acts chapter 2, which is the end of the day of Pentecost, we see what happened that day. People were compelled and convicted when Peter preached about Jesus' life and death and resurrection. So convicted, we're told, that thousands of people were baptized that day. Thousands of people. The ideas and dreams of Jesus begin to become a reality as people came together and devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings about Jesus, the fellowship of the church, the breaking of bread and the prayers, Acts tells us. All of this is inspired and animated by the Holy Spirit at work that day that came in a whirlwind like fire. But the people opening themselves up to the Spirit's presence, that's what made it a reality. What a beautiful day. And ever since that moment in history, ever since the church has been striving 
to make the dreams and the visions and teachings of Jesus a practical reality that is lived out in people's hearts and minds and lives. Now we know that in the early church when Christianity was illegal and persecuted, that was some of the times when the church was growing the fastest actually. And there's records from Roman generals who who wrote letters to one another and, uh, and, and chronicled things, and they would say stuff like, look at these Christians. Like, we don't understand these people at all, but look how they love one another. There's something pulling there about this way of Jesus. Ultimately, what has been and continues to be inspiring and convicting about the church is the deep truth of Jesus being lived out, of his love, love of God and love of neighbor. And when it's put into practice, People can't help but see it and say, this is the best way to live. Better than the alternatives. And the church throughout history, even today, is far from perfect. Far from perfect. But when the church gets love right, we see God's dream for humanity begin to take shape. We see people gather around the dream and the vision and the way of Jesus, and people bring it to life. Thinking about Walt Disney's quote, you can dream it, but it takes people to make it a reality. People guided by the Spirit. People rooted in God's love. Friends, when we began Grace Church, I've said it before, but I'll share it again for those of you that haven't heard it. When we began, I got the key to the building from Roger. Roger gave me the key to the building that day. We met at Starbucks, which he had never been to before. And I came into the church that night, and I sat in the front row, a little bit overwhelmed at the task at hand. And I prayed to God, and I said, Lord, we, Curtis and I, we are going to work so hard for you. But you've got to send us people. Send a lot of people. (laughs) Send people into our lives and into our church. Because it takes people to make the dream become a reality. And God has been faithful to that dream. And so many ways over the years, as people have made their way to Grace Church by many, many roads. There have been people who have driven by on a Sunday morning with no intention at all of going to any church and seen our sign. I'm talking three, four, five people who have told me this over the years. Seen our sign and said, I'm going to go to Grace Church today (laughs) and pulled into the parking lot. There was one person who was on their way to another church a nameless church down the street from us, and who saw our sign and pulled into the parking lot, called their friend who was waiting for them at the front door of the other church and said, I'm not going to be there to meet you today. I'm going to Grace Church this morning. And they never left. Many people have come to Grace Church feeling burned out, sometimes pushed out of the church. Maybe they brought up too many questions in their Bible study. Maybe their life didn't fit the mold of what they thought the church expected of them or what they thought God expected. Their theology no longer matched up with the complexities of life, and they didn't know where to go from there. They felt like a square peg in a round hole. Others had an amazing experience of meeting one of our members and hearing about how God was at work in their life, how their faith had been re-energized, how they had met amazing Uh, an amazing, diverse community of people, people who loved Jesus and loved to serve Jesus, and they thought, maybe I should check out that church too, and they got invited to church. Recently, someone told me this, that they knew in the chaotic year of 2020 that they needed to find a new church, and so they thought of the people in their lives who most looked like Jesus and most lived like Jesus and reminded them of Jesus' love. And they realized that several of those people all went to Grace Church. And so they thought, maybe there's a place for me there too. There are countless paths that have led people to this church. And in this movement, God has been faithful. And our members, our people, have been faithful to God at work in their lives. And friends, here's the one thing I want you to make sure you hear. So wake up if you're not listening. There's one takeaway for today. It would be this, that you are the church. You are the church. You make God's dream, God's vision, a reality on heaven and on earth as in heaven by living out the love 
the hospitality, the welcome, the service, the grace, the forgiveness, the generosity of God in your lives. And you live this out, not just on Sundays, but every day. My friend Jimmy Bartz says at his church, we are Monday through Saturday followers of Jesus who worship on Sunday. And I see that in you, friends. You are the church. The church is not this building. The church is not the building that we aim to construct. But you are the church. Buildings are merely tools for ministry, for creating sacred space, for gathering people together who want to learn how to follow Jesus more fully and to put his love into practice in their lives. And so I'm thankful for God for being faithful and helping us to gather people here. And I'm thankful for all of you who actually put God's dreams into practice. Because of your faithfulness, lives have been touched and transformed through the ministries of Grace Church. People have found a home here. They have found friends and family they didn't know they had. They found a place to grow in their faith, a place to raise their kids, a place to not feel judged, a place to really experience the grace and love of God in tangible ways in their lives. And so today, I want to celebrate the impact of that ministry of Grace Church, of you and of God through this place over the years. And we have a special video that some members of our church uh, were bold enough and brave enough to come in and share a piece of their testimony and just a glimpse, a bit of their heart. And so I want to share this video with you today. Oh Lord, who at thy table did pray that your people may be one. Let us gather at your table to say with all our hearts thy will. Glad Eric's not here today, because every time he's crying about one of these videos, he gets me going. <sighs> Man, I'm, in, I'm as excited now as I've ever been about the ministry of this church. And friends, the people are the church. It's us working together by the grace of God. And together, we make the vision of Christ's love a reality. And friends, we do have next steps as a church. We have visions and dreams that we do want to become a reality. And we need people like you to help make it a reality. I'm not just talking about the capital campaign. I'm not just talking about a, the new facility that we have designed and built and planned for. Yes, we do need your prayers and we do need your financial support for this. Absolutely. But I'm, what I'm talking about is so far beyond a building. Because the people are the church. The building is a tool for ministry, a tool for impacting people's lives. So I'm dreaming, friends, about the lost sheep that's out there that wonders if there is a place for them in church, wondering if God really does love them. 
And our work, friends, is not done, and we are not living into Jesus' calling for us as the church unless we're reaching them and inviting them, inviting them into this loving relationship with God. And this facility will help make sure that we have room for them, but it's up to us to continue to invite and welcome and reach new people and to have that heart to continue to do so. I'm dreaming, friends, about the generations of kids who are growing up in our church and who will come to church over the next 5, 10, 20 years. I'm dreaming about the ministries that can happen in the classrooms of the campus of 600 North Mustang Road. I'm dreaming, friends, about the fellowship and the community meals and our plans for what we want our Wednesday nights to look like here at Grace Church, the groups that are going to be meeting, the classes that are going to happen, the, the, the community meals that we're going to center that around. I'm thinking about the ways that people's faith in God will be renewed as they gain a deeper understanding of Scripture, a healthy way of doing theology, a deeper prayer life, a deeper commitment to Christ. I'm dreaming, friends, about the outreach ministries that are going to be possible. As our community continues to grow, in numbers, and in dedication to serving Christ in our neighbors. The people and the financial resources that are possible in a growing church will allow us to impact more lives and meet the needs of the community around us and make sure that we are living out our rule of life of generous hearts. Friends, this campaign is about much more than a new campus. It is about increasing our capacity for ministry. It is about opening up possibilities and opportunities to have a love-spreading difference, not only in our lives, but the lives of others, and not just now, but for generations to come. You can dream, create, design, and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it requires people to make it a reality. Friends, Grace Church is a pretty amazing place but it is you that make it that way. You are the church. And so as we continue to dream, design, build, and create this wonderful church community, I am thankful for you, the people through whom God is doing amazing things. Amen. Now, if you would please stand. Each and every week we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, in this season of prayer and opportunity for our church and our future, we come to you in prayer, asking for your presence, guidance, and inspiration. Lord, do what you want through me. Lord, do what you want through me. I am yours, forever yours. Sing that with us. Lord, do what you want through me, Lord, do what you want through me, I am yours, forever yours. Lord, we open ourselves to you today and invite you to use us as your instruments of peace, of kindness, of generosity, of love in the world. Help us to spread those fruits of the Spirit to all those we meet, that we would be vessels of your love. We pray especially for all those who are sick or in need today, those who feel forgotten, those far from home. We pray for areas of need around the world where our human family is hungry or scared or overcome by anxiety or fear. May your presence lift them up 
and your healing make them whole. We pray for our country which is struggling to find unity and peace and justice. We pray for our elected leaders, from city councilors all the way to the President of the United States. We pray for health, good judgment, and a hope for our common good. We pray for smooth elections and we give thanks for the democracy we have inherited. Help us to be good stewards of our freedoms. Lord, come and give us your presence, guidance, and inspiration. Lord, do what you want through me. Lord, do what you want through me. I am yours, forever yours. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, your body of Christ, that it may have arms of love for all your people, we pray for our Diocese of Oklahoma and the Episcopal Church, and especially for Grace Church. We pray for those in our community who have requested prayers, especially Maxine, Diane, Zach, Sam and Olivia, Lee, Paige, Don, Scott, Becky, Susie, Sherry, Rick, Deidre, Howard, Christian, Bonnie, Dell, Joyce, Leanne, Daryl, Donna, Buddy, Jessica, Seth, Laura and Robert, Deb, Oliver, Austin, Adrian, Sarah, Kelly, Barb, Carolyn, Lucille, Clay, Sarah, Alice, Kenny, Larry, Virginia, Jackie, Betty, Kent, Joseph, and all affected by COVID. And we pray for those who have died, especially Barbara, Bill, Maybell, and Mike. May light perpetual be upon them. And as we lift up our church in prayer, we ask you to guide and direct us as we continue to grow in your grace. Help us to reach people who need your love. Help us to mature in our faith. Help us to grow as your disciples. Help us to make a difference and impact in our community. You put before us opportunities and challenges. Help us each to respond how you intend so that the full measure of your grace would be realized in our lives. Lord, what do you want to do through me? What do you want to do through us? May it be infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Amen. Lord, do what you want through me. Lord, do what you want through me. I am yours, forever yours. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another with the peace of Christ. God's peace, musicians. <laughs> all right. Our socially distant peace of the Lord is still an important part of our service. You God's peace. Feel God's so peace special. to you all. Uh, and as you make your way back to your seats, um, you. I especially want to welcome you if it's your first time to Grace. Whether We've got new people 
in the room and, and online that I've seen some names pop up that I didn't recognize. And so we want to welcome you to our service today. And we would love a chance to get to know you better. Uh, we have a little online form at graceyukon.org slash new here that you can fill out. Uh, and that gives us a chance to respond to you. And uh, uh, I'll give you a call or a, an email and we can uh, get to know you a little bit better and help you get to know us. But we're glad that you're joining us for worship uh, today. Uh, you, and um, on t- today, as we think about just the various ministries of our church and uh, the ways that we've impacted people's lives in our community, I just want to say some big thank yous uh, to many people out there uh, who, you know, first of all, on our staff side, uh, I want to thank Kyle and all of our amazing musicians and uh, volunteers who help make our music ministry so awesome. Uh, particularly through kind of the dark, uncertain period of March, April, May, um, when we got streaming really quickly and continued on um, and uh, reaching people with some inspiring music and worship through some really difficult months uh, that drag on, but were just particularly intense then. Um, I want to thank you know, Matt and Grace and for our kids and our student ministries that have constantly been adapting and changing so that we can continue to, uh, to, to reach the kids and the students in our, in our community and keep them connected here. Uh, I want to thank all those who are helping keep our outreach ministries going, particularly our hunger team, uh, our laundry love ministry that we relaunched this summer, uh, our meals of grace that has resumed, just amazing things going on. Uh, our Zoom small groups and our small groups that continue to hold the fellowship of this church together uh, in those smaller ways, even as we can't do a lot of the big events and big fun things that we'd like to do. Just so many thank yous to go around for the amazing ways that this community has adapted uh, and pivoted and uh, kept our eye on Walt Disney's progress of where we're headed and you know where God is leading us through these times. So just so much to be thankful for, um, and I'm, I'm grateful for all of you um, for your support. And those of you who are joining us online uh, and uh, following with regularity just the worship life and the community life of the church, we want to thank you too um, for, for your participation in the life of the church. So there's a couple things coming up that are, uh, that are big and exciting, and I want to make sure everybody's got their calendar marked for October 25th, which is going to be our celebration of Sunday. Uh, and so that day, we're starting at 9.15 at the new property down the street. Everything is outside that day so that we can spread out and be socially distant uh, and hopefully gather as many people as possible. Uh, but we're going to start at 9.15 with a little prayer service on the new property. We've got a, we've got a bagpiper that's going to be here. It's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm excited. I hope you're excited to join us for that. And we're going to say some prayers on the new property. Uh, then at 10 o'clock, we're having one joint service that day. Not a 9 and 11, but one 10 o'clock service. Uh, again, outside. It'll have a very simple live stream because we're not going to bring all the equipment out. But we'll have one camera, a very simple stream for those of you who are joining us online that day. But we hope... Uh, if you're in the area, that you might feel comfortable coming in person since we're going to be outside and spread out. And then we're renting a big tent because, I mean, we're having a tent revival, if you will, here at Grace Church that day. And we're going to have a reception afterwards and spread out in the seating area for the service and in the tent so everybody can safely be distanced. Um, and uh, just so that we can celebrate all that God's doing in the life of our church. And then November 1st is our commitment Sunday for our campaign. So we hope that you just continue to pray, um, God, what do you want to do through me? And that we see what God wants to do through all of us come together um, through this campaign. So we uh, are looking forward to sharing those events with you um, and and the ways that that God will continue to knit us together and use us uh, uh, to impact this community. So thank you uh, to to all of you um, for being here today and for tuning in Thank you for RSVPing. You can do that, by the way, online um, at graceyukon.org slash growingingrace. Uh, there's a page there so that you can uh, uh, RSVP for that event. And those of you here, we're taking RSVPs after the service. We look forward to sharing those events with you. Friends, now, today, we pivot to the table. Uh, we remember Jesus present with his disciples at that Last Supper, and Jesus continues to be dis- present with us when his disciples gather today in this bread and wine. So we want to remind you that all are welcome to come forward and to receive the sacrament, whether grace is your home church or, some, or, uh, or home tradition or not, because these are God's 
Uh, these are God's gifts for all of God's people. So we want you to feel most welcome to come forward and receive. The way we're going to do that here in the sanctuary is that we're gonna, you're going to be ushered into a single file line. Uh, please keep a social distance between family units. You'll, uh, ha- you'll take a pump of hand sanitizer at one of the two stations on your way up. Uh, and then as you come forward with your mask on, um, we'll distribute just the bread alone today. And as you walk back to your seat, you can take your mask off and consume your communion bread. Uh, but these are some of our, our coronavirus procedures this, uh, uh, in this season, and so we want to make sure that you feel comfortable doing that. Uh, also, you're welcome to come forward and just ask for a God's blessing instead of the bread, and that would be perfectly acceptable as well. Uh, friends, let us ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Let us come of one accord to lift up praises to our King. There is splendor and power. the body come alive and our creator be glorified we are, we're gonna know god shall name. know god's name in the earth, and the earth we're gonna sing his praise we'll sing god's praise and all, the earth, all the earth shall sing we're gonna the sing praise of our god of our god, of our god. Of our god. let us come and one to speak lies. Spirit, give us eyes to see. Your perfect love for humanity and the earth. We're gonna know God's name. Shall know God's name. And the earth. earth. We're gonna sing his praise. We sing God's praise. And all of the earth. All of the earth shall sing. We're gonna the sing the praise of our God. Of our God. Of our God. Of our God. Of the earth. one accord to see each other and our needs when we gather there is power all around us power to live right power to be light over our cities and neighbors to speak lies spirit give us eyes to see your perfect love for humanity and the earth
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And in the night he was handed over to die for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Alleluia. It is our custom um, during this time to say a special prayer for those of you who are at home and cannot receive, but still long to draw near to God in communion. 
In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at this altar, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Together, we believe that you are truly present in the holy sacrament, and since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite with, with you and embrace you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and an ending peace. Amen. And for those of us gathered here, this is the table of Jesus. It's made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come because it's Jesus who invites you. It's God's will that those who wish would meet him here. You all may now be seated and your rose will be ushered forward to receive communion. Jesus bread of life, manna from heaven, broken for the world, offered up for every man. The feast of angels becomes food for the weary, and hungry hearts are when you open up your hand, when you open up your hand, oh Lord, come fill us with your love. This table laid for us. There more than enough, Jesus, bread of life. Sister, take what you need, everything I own. There is no famine here. Jesus' love will multiply. Brother, what's mine is yours. You are not alone. There is no shortage here. Jesus' love satisfies. Jesus' love satisfies. Oh,
Now let us pray in thanksgiving for these gifts we've shared. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with godness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ, his Son. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us go out into the world to love and serve our God and neighbor. Thanks be to God. We hope you have a most blessed Sunday, and thank you for worshiping with us.